Hello, and welcome to this service of Christian worship. My name is Reverend John Van Nuys. I'm the pastor of Wabash Avenue Presbyterian Church in Crawfordsville, Indiana. On behalf of our church family, our governing board, the session, our diaconate, the deacons, everyone in our church family, we welcome your family and you to this virtual worship service. The Bible tells us that wherever two or more are gathered, that God is present. So God is present whether we are gathered physically or whether we are gathered uh, in the cloud. Uh, 
God is present. And let us trust that as we come before the Lord in worship, that God has something to say to all of us collectively and to you personally. I imagine there's some new faces on the other side of the screen who are uh, maybe uh, watching and participating in worship today. Please know that you are most welcome. I look forward to meeting you after uh, this pandemic has passed. We want to thank our organist, Alan White, for our prelude. And let us now come before the Lord in worship. Our call to worship comes from Psalm 121. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where does my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. The Lord will not let your foot be moved. The God who keeps you will not slumber. Behold the God who keeps Israel, neither slumbers nor sleeps. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not smite you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. The Lord will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. Our opening hymn is sung by Will Borland. in God's mercy like the whiteness of the sea. There's a kindness in God's justice which is more than liberty. There is no place where earth's sorrows are more felt than up in heaven. There is no place where earth's failings have such kindly judgment given. For the love of God is broader than the measures of the mind, and the heart of the eternal is most wonderfully kind. If our love were but more faithful, we would gladly trust God's word, and our lives reflect thanksgiving for the goodness of our Lord. Hear now the call to confession. God has promised that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Therefore, let us call upon the Lord confessing our sins. Please join me in our prayer of confession. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, mind, and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us amend what we are and direct what we shall be so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Let us now to continue to confess our sins in silence. Amen. Receive now the declaration of pardon. Confession is hard. It forces us to take a look at ourselves, our weaknesses, our faults. We often have trouble forgiving ourselves and believing that you ever forgive us, O God, but you do. Thank you, Lord, for your love understanding, and the knowledge that in Jesus Christ, your saving mercy is here for us. Friends, believe the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Please join me in our prayer for illumination. Gracious God, 
Grant a stillness of, of mind and purity of heart to receive the good news this day. Amen. Our scripture today comes from the Hebrew Bible from the book of 2 Chronicles chapter 12, verse 9, and the first part of verse 10. So listen now for God's word as it speaks to you. King Shishak of Egypt came up against Jerusalem. He took away the treasures of the house of the Lord and the treasures of the king's house. He took everything. He also took away the shields of gold that Solomon had made. But King Rehoboam made in place of them shields of bronze. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Making the most of the second best. The second law of thermodynamics states, quote, the entropy of an isolated system not in equilibrium will tend to increase over time. Or more plainly put, the entropy, the randomness, the disorder, the chaos of the universe either stays the same or it gets bigger. It never decreases. Chaos always increases. Order always tends to dissolve into disorder. Clean your bathtub and eventually you'll have to clean it again. You can mow your lawn, but you will have to mow it again. Order always dissolves into disorder. Entropy, randomness, and chaos are inescapable facts of this life. Some things like bathtubs and lawns can be restored to the order you want to impose on them. Other things cannot be restored to the order we prefer. We all want to stay young, and we can certainly do things to keep ourselves healthy. But we cannot stop or reverse the process we know as aging. Disruptive events also occur, like this pandemic, which we will survive, but this event is permanently changing our world and us. The world we knew before the coronavirus is gone. There's a famous novel entitled Things Fall Apart. That's what happens in this world. Chaos is a relentless force that can make us feel hopeless and powerless. Nonetheless, there is hope and we do have power. Our hope is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Our hope is in that God, the one God, who is mightier than chaos or any problem we face. Our power to cooperate with our way-making God is here. And that power in conjunction with God's power will, allows God to lead us into life and it allows God to love us into blessing. God will make the way as we make the effort and as we have eyes to see. Case in point, the temple in Jerusalem. King Solomon of Israel built a glorious temple adorned with gold. King Shishak of Egypt looted Solomon's temple, carrying away all the gold. But that wasn't the end of the story. Solomon's son, King Rehoboam, restored the temple. God helped Rehoboam restore the order that Shishak had destroyed. However, Rehoboam and his ravished kingdom couldn't afford to replace Solomon's stolen shields of gold. Rehoboam could only replace them with shields of bronze. 
God helped Rehoboam restore the temple. However, the restoration couldn't replicate the gold standard of Solomon. Rehoboam had to settle for bronze. All of us want to win the gold medal. We all want to have shiny, perfect lives. We want to have the best and be the best, and we want even more for our children. But the truth is that none of us is perfect. None of us have lived the life we intended to live. All of us experience setbacks and sorrows, defeats and disappointments. However, we also have the power and possibility to work with God to make the most out of the second best. None of us wants to be in this pandemic, but how can we work with God today to make the most of this present moment? None of us wants to get old, but how can we discover, live, and enjoy what is good in the stage of life in which we are today? Whatever your setback status or situation, how can you work with God to make the most of the second best? To make the most of things right now. In 2008, Stanford University track team member Alicia Fulmar was one lap into a race when she was accidentally tripped from behind. She fell hard and was trampled. Fulmar had been spiked in the forehead and was bleeding profusely. But she didn't give up. Instead, she got up. She began running and she stayed in the race. She regained her stride and with blood flowing down her face and neck, she powered her way during the remaining laps of the race from being dead last to finishing third. Someone else got the gold medal, but the bronze medal went to the real winner. In the race, Alicia Fulmar finished third. In reality, she finished first. God can turn our setbacks into successes if we work with God to make the most of the second best. Forget perfection. God does not expect that from you. You shouldn't expect that from you either. What God wants you to be is loving. And what makes us more loving? When placed in God's hands, our hurts, our failures, and our suffering can make us more compassionate, more forgiving, more open-hearted, more like our Savior. Work with Him by being flexible, patient, and hopeful and he will bring you through the dark night of your soul into the dawn of healing, wholeness, and peace. None of us want to suffer, but God can transform our suffering. Work with God to make the most of where you are right now. Do your part, trusting that God will certainly do his as you do, you will experience resurrection. Let us pray. Let us unite our hearts and minds in prayer for our world, saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the church throughout the world, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Inspire the sons and daughters of your church to follow in your way and witness to your truth. And upon old and young, give clarity of vision and faith to acknowledge your saving power in their lives and in the world. For the nations of the world and its leaders, especially our President Donald, our Governor Eric, 
and our Mayor Todd. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Overcome the babble of misunderstanding among the nations and let all people hear clearly and respond joyfully to your unifying message of love that we may work together to help everyone have what they need to live through this pandemic. For the planet Earth, our home, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. By your spirit, renew the earth, make us good stewards of its resources, and teach us to enjoy its abundance rightly. Bless all who farm with favorable growing weather for their crops that your good earth may feed us all. For those in need of healing, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Among those known to us, O oh God, we pray for Judy, Linda, Marty, and Roger. Send your healing spirit upon all who are infirm in body, mind, or spirit. Restore them to full health and restore to them the joy of your salvation. For our neighbors and community, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Teach us to be good neighbors, to live in peace with one another, and in friendship share the joys and burdens of daily life. Protect all who are serving on the front lines of this pandemic. May these unseen caregivers be regarded as the apple of your eye as you hold them safely in the palm of your hand. For our children, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless our children, protect them from danger, and help parents and caregivers nurture them so that they may mature in wisdom and grow in grace. For our enemies, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless our enemies and show us how we may do good to them, forgiving them, and when possible, working for reconciliation for the sake of Jesus Christ. For all who mourn, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Be with all who grieve, especially those who mourn for Helen, Scott, and Barry. Grant them your presence and your peace. For all who are forgotten, discarded, and alone, and who have no one to pray for them, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Pour out your grace upon them and upon these persons and concerns which we now name silently before you. In your mercy, O God, receive these prayers and according to your wisdom, provide all that is needed for your mercy to flow, for your salvation to triumph, and for your kingdom to come. We ask this in the name of your Son who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our closing hymn is sung by our choir director, Jenny Fight Swick. Just friends. 
child at home. Receive now the charge and the benediction. I charge all of us to remember that God is bigger than any problem we face. Let us all set aside perfection that we may grow in love and let us recognize the abundant blessings of God here in this moment and let us build upon those, trusting that as we do, God's grace and love will flow and all creation will be blessed. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord turn a shining face unto you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace now and forevermore. Amen.